So now you know how to program your own wall jump. What do you mean that my OBS crashed and I lost two hours of footage and I have to film it again? Oh, oh, hi there. I didn't see you there. Today's video is about wall jumping. And what do we need to cook a wall jump? Well, I already prepared some things. I have one script, second script and third script. My character can jump, can walk and I have an input controller script. We all mixed it up and the result is here. Every fixed update I'm calling my move and jump method which are in uh, both of the scripts respectively. In character jump I have a function jump and in character movement I have function movement or move. You can have whatever functions you have for movement. This video is not about that. So our character can move, can jump, even jump twice, I mean jump in the air, but it cannot jump on the walls. Okay, our character has a capsule collider and our capsule collider has height and size X and we want to detect our ground or walls in our case by casting a box. And our box is gonna be a rectangle like this, the blue rectangle and its size is gonna be X and the longer size is gonna be Y minus X because half of our X size is the radius of the circles that the capsule is made of and if we take uh, both of those halves and put them together we get X if we subtract y minus x, we get uh, our height. So in the code, we can uh, draw wire cube using gizmos. And I gave it a center point, which is capsule collider. Capcol is in our case, collider of our capsule like this. And the second parameter is vector that contains size of our box and we are using size.x and uh, we are actually subtracting a small number so we don't uh, go over the sides of the capsule and the second second number in our vector is the height which we get by subtracting y minus x so with our gizmos we can see we have a box that uh, in this case looks like a square, but uh, it could be a rectangle. And it's a little bit smaller than our capsule. And precisely this uh, gap is 1F and the gap on the other side is also 1F. And we are going to be casting a race for both right and left, a little bit beyond the capsule collider. And we are going to be doing so using a physics to the box cast. In our case, we are doing the same thing as in our gizmos. We are passing the center, which is capcal bounds.center, and the same vector, which takes uh, the size x minus a small value, and the second variable of our vector is taking uh, y minus x. Next parameter is a rotation, so we don't need any rotation, so we are going to put zero there. And we have two values for left and right. We have raycast left, raycast right. They are both the same. The only difference is we are using vector.left in the first one and vector.right for the last one. And the rest of the values are small number. As I said, we need to be casting a small arrows beyond our capsule. And since the gap is 0.1f, we are casting uh, 0.01f over that. 
And the last parameter is a layer mask. In our case, I'm using ground mask, which is spelled wrong and you can do anything about it. And our ground mask is a layer mask and we assign the value layer mask dot get mask and name of the layer. And I created that layer using our add layer where I added my platform layer. So we have two values that is that are telling us if we are touching left or right wall. And uh, in our method that is going to be returning integer is going to be returning minus one if the raycast collider is not now of the left value and it's going to be returning one if the recast right collider is returning now. And if neither of those are returning anything, you're going to be returning zero. So if we, if we are touching left, it's going to be returning minus one. If we are touching right, we are going to be returning one. And if we're not touching anything, we are going to be returning zero. Currently we are moving to the side by adding force with a limit, but still adding force. So that means if I jump on the wall, I'm still adding force to my character and uh, the friction is refusing to let our character go. So we need to get rid of that. We are going to do so by limiting our axes. We are getting our input horizontal in our update. And this code is going to prevent the character getting stuck on the wall. Basically, this means if we're staying on the left wall and we are pressing left, all the minus values, no, 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 you cannot pass, only, only the positive ones. And same if we are staying on the right wall and we try to press right, no, 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 only the negative values are allowed. So we are passing horizontal input axes only if we're pressing the correct way while touching the ground. And if we're not touching anything, uh, we are pretty much free to go whenever we want. And the last else is just clearing uh, the horizontal value so we still don't get stuck. So now if we jump to the wall, we don't get stuck anymore and we need to take care of uh, wall grab ourselves. So we will just simply ask if we are touching wall and we are not on the ground. Uh, is grounded is my other function that I already created before this video. You can check that in a different video of mine. So again, if we are touching a wall and we are not on the ground and also we are not pressing the S key, which is the down key, we're going to be resetting our gravity scale to zero. And also we are going to be setting our velocity of the rigid body. Our B is my rigid body to vector to zero. So we're going to be zeroing out our gravity scale and velocity. Otherwise, uh, if we are going to be pressing the S key or we are not touching the wall, we are going to be resetting our gravity scale to a normal gravity and uh, variable normal gravity is just at the start of the game. We are setting the gravity scale of our rigid body to normal gravity, which is our base gravity. So here we are just resetting our gravity back to the normal. So our wall grab is going to be working. But if we try to jump from the plus one jump we have normally, we are going to get stuck. So if I just ran into the wall and try to jump, I'm going to get stuck like uh, not even halfway there. So we need to add uh, another condition. We are going to be adding if our velocity of the rigid body on the Y axis is less than zero we are going to be resetting our gravity scale. So if we, if our Y is more than zero, uh, we are not going to be grabbing. The result looks like this. 
we're gonna be flying through the roof because uh, if I try to jump with the zero gravity scale, our character is gonna be super fast. I'm not gonna worry about that because I'm gonna be changing the vector of our jump and it's always gonna be resetting our gravity scale back if we jump off the, off the wall. And to change our vector, we're gonna be using a private vector to jump vector, which is a vector to dot up as a default. And here I'm asking if I'm touching a wall and I am not on the ground, I am changing the vector, the jump vector to a new vector that is going to be containing opposite value of our wall because our touching wall is returning minus one if we're on the left side and we want to jump the other way. We need to take the opposite uh, number of uh, touching wall. So I'm going to be multiplying our touching wall method with a minus one, that's always gonna be the opposite. And the second value of the vector can stay zero, uh, can stay one. Uh, you can change the value as you want, it's on your preference. And also, my jump method is currently taking only two parameters and not a vector parameter, so let's change that. I'm gonna delete this. And in our character jump, I'm just gonna add a vector2 to our method jump that is going to be applying to our apply force to reach velocity. So I'm passing the jump vector in our character input controller here. I'm passing the jump vector, the jump force and the maximum speed. And the vector is always changing based on our touching wall. So if I'm touching the left wall, the vector is going to be 1, 1. If I'm touching the right wall, the vector is going to be minus 1, 1. Otherwise, the vector is always going to be vector up. So that means that if you're jumping uh, nowhere near the walls, uh, we're going to be jumping upwards. So let's try that. As you can see, we can jump pretty, pretty nicely, but we still need a little bit of code because uh, if I tried to spam the key, I can jump like a madman. So I, I'm i gonna be limiting our jump. I'm gonna be pausing our horizontal input when we jump uh, from the wall. For that, I'm gonna need a coroutine, which is called stop horizontal. And I also have a boolean value stop horizontal, which I'm going to be setting for true. And for this amount of seconds, 0.1f, I'm going to be waiting. And then I'm going to set the stop horizontal to false. And our stop horizontal is supposed to be when we are jumping. This code is for jumping. So right in here. I'm going to be asking if uh, I'm pressing the key code W and also I'm grounded. I'm setting can jump to true. This means that I can jump. Otherwise, if I am uh, touching a wall and I press again key code W, I can also jump and also I'm going to be calling our start coroutine. So if we jump from the wall, it's going to take us uh, 0 0.0. It's going to take us 0.1f seconds, which is uh, one tenth of the second till we can move again. So if I run this and as you can see, we get this nice little curve when we are jumping. So now you know how to program your own wall jump. That's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I lost the OBS recording uh, of the previous session. So I had like two hours of recording uh, me failing. Uh, so I had to record it again. I hope you 
learn something from it. If you learn something from it, you can write a comment below that it helped you. And if you want to support me, you can press the subscribe slash. You can press the like to tell me that you like the video. And that's all from me. And I'm going to see you next time. Bye.